Even though most of Israel is desert, it has become a world leader in safe farming technology and new ideas. They have come up with innovative farming methods because they have had to. This is why their crops are so good. In a way that is truly amazing, Israel has turned its dry deserts into fields that can be used for many years to come. To understand the problems Israeli farmers face, you need to know about the hard weather in the country. A very small amount of rain falls each year in some places of Israel. Most of the rain falls between November and March. This means that it doesn't rain for the rest of the year, which is a big problem for farmers who need to grow food all year to feed their families and the country. But Israeli scientists and farmers have come up with new ways to make the best use of water, land, and food. These methods not only help the Israeli people, but they could also change the way farming is done all over the world. Researchers in Israel are eager to share their knowledge and technology with farmers in other countries who are having the same problems with the environment. By using these new ideas, countries that have harsh conditions can grow food all year long while saving valuable resources. Israel's ability to turn deserts into farmland is an example of how creative people can be. By using sustainable farming methods, Israel has shown that it is possible to get around the problems that dry environments bring and make sure that future generations will have food. Israel has a big problem with farming because there isn't enough water. Israeli farmers and experts, on the other hand, have come up with creative ways to turn the desert into good farmland. With a population of about 8.5 million people living in a country about the size of New Jersey and a growth rate of about 1.6%, Israel needs to make the most of its food production. But where does a country that is mostly desert get its water? The answer is in the sea outside of Greece. Even though the salt in the ocean hurts most plants grown on land, Israel has found a way to use this water source. With desalination plants, the salt is taken out and clean water is made. This method is not only used in farming, but it is also used to make drinking water. Desalination can be expensive and use a lot of energy, but Israel has done it successfully, making sure they have a nearly endless supply of water. The Israeli desalination plants work by taking salt water from the Mediterranean Sea and sending it to a room for first treatment. In this room, the water goes through different filters to get rid of any sediments or particles that are floating in it. This important step makes sure that the rest of the dehydration process goes smoothly. Any bigger pieces that get through this tank could block the next set of filters, which could mean that the whole system needs to be cleaned out before the desalination process can start up again. The water moves through the filter system with the help of both gravity and jets during the pretreatment process. Once there are no bigger bits in the water, the salt has to be taken out. The molecules of salt are too small for regular screens to remove because the salt is dissolved in the water. Reverse osmosis is used instead in the dehydration process. Water goes through a semi-permeable membrane with holes that are small enough that only water molecules can pass through. This is called reverse osmosis. The molecule of salt knackle is bigger than the molecule of water H2O. This means that the water molecule can pass through the tiny holes in the membrane, but the salt molecule gets stuck behind it. But reverse osmosis gets rid of more than just salt. It also sorts any other dissolved substances from the molecules of H2O. This makes a water source that is clean and germ-free. Still, this is not the last step in the process. It's interesting that Israel's purification process works so well that chemicals and minerals have to be added back into the water to make sure it tastes good and doesn't rust. This is done at desalination plants during the third stage, before the water is sent to taps and irrigation systems across the country. Additionally, the desalination process is very efficient and can produce huge amounts of fresh drinking water, but it needs a lot of energy and can be very expensive as a result. Israel is aware that it doesn't have many choices, so it has put a lot of money into purification plants along its coast. New plants are added all the time to make sure that fresh water output keeps up with population growth, but this puts a huge amount of stress on Israel's desalination plants and water delivery systems since the water also needs to get to farms 
and companies that work with agriculture. So Israel is very interested in the progress of desalination technology because they know that waste needs to be kept to a minimum in order to make enough water for farming. Every drop of water in the dry desert is treated with the greatest care because it is as valuable as gold. Most desalination plants and water cleaning systems have to deal with leaks that let water escape. Every day, thousands of gallons of water can be lost because of even a small crack in a pipe. This much waste is not acceptable for something as important as water, especially for Israel and its farming methods. So, Israel has put a lot of money into infrastructure and monitors that can find cracks early so they can be fixed or patched up right away. Because of these systems and improvements in technology, Israel has an incredibly low rate of water leakage, only 7 to 8 percent during operation. This is a huge improvement over the average rate of 30% loss for most water systems around the world. Israel is able to keep millions of gallons of water from going to waste every year. Also, almost all of the water that Israelis and farms use is recycled and used for other things, which makes it even more useful and reduces waste. Israel has the best rate of reusing water of any country. More than 80% of the water that is sent to farms and homes is recycled. Water treatment plants remove waste from water by using both natural and man-made filters. A lot of the water used for farming and irrigation comes from these plants. The end result is worth the time it takes to do this process, which can take up to six months to fully clean the wastewater. Recycling water is an important part of turning wastes into farmland, because farming would not be possible without clean water sources. Today, we're going to talk about the secret methods and tools that farmers use to grow food in Israel's barren deserts. We are aware that water is very important and that it comes from rain, purification plants, and recycling centers. But how do farmers really turn deserts into good land for farming? A very important part of this process is precise watering. In the same way that water is treated and distributed, Israeli farms try to waste as little water as possible. With precision irrigation, they can water their crops more effectively while using less water. This not only saves money, but also keeps useful tools fresh. Different complex and useful methods are used to complete this task, and drip irrigation is one of them. Drip watering not only saves water and nutrients, but it also makes sure that every plant gets the food it needs. Drip watering works in a way that can be predicted. The water is spread out by tubes and nozzles that are close to the ground and spray water directly on the soil above the roots. After that, this water goes into the ground and feeds the plants. The roots can take in more water before it disappears with this simple but effective method. Sometimes the watering system goes right through the ground, giving water to the roots of plants that are below the ground. Compared to traditional watering systems that spray a lot of water across the field, which causes more water to evaporate, both of these methods lower the amount of water needed to keep big crop fields alive. Drip irrigation is often used for growing fruits and veggies, but it can also work very well for growing field crops like corn, wheat, and rice. Israeli studies from the past few years show that drip farming is the best way to grow these kinds of foods. Using drip irrigation instead of standard paddy systems has been shown to make the rice yield in a certain area go up by a huge amount. One big benefit is that crops can be grown more quickly. Another benefit is that drip gardening uses 70% less water, which helps protect water sources. Compared to traditional farming ways, it also cuts methane emissions by almost 100% and arsenic uptake by up to 90% respectively. These numbers are big, and they open up a whole new world of healthy farming. The harsh truth is that the dry conditions Israel is currently fighting could become normal in many places as the Earth's climate changes and droughts happen more often. If we don't wait so long, though, it will be better for everyone. It seems like drip irrigation could be a way to save resources while also growing crop yields and lowering greenhouse gas emissions like methane. This method is good for both people and the earth. Besides that, Israel hasn't stopped yet. Instead, they've added variable rate irrigation, VRI, technology to their already eco-friendly drip watering methods to make them even more sustainable. 
this cutting-edge technology could change the world in a big way. With the help of sensors and software, VRI can measure things like nutrient levels and wetness levels. This lets it give the right amount of water to each plant based on its needs. This is a big step forward because it makes sure that each crop gets the right amount of water to grow while wasting as little as possible. As an example, the sensors keep an eye on the soil's moisture level, the rate of transpiration, and the temperature in the area all day long. Using this comprehensive data, a computer can accurately calculate the exact amount of water needed by each plant at any given time. Because of this, plants next to each other may get very different amounts of water based on the type of crop they have and what it needs. Because the VRI system makes a unique watering schedule for each plant, this customized method improves crop yield and growth. The amazing thing about VRI systems that are turning Israeli fields into farmland right now is that they can work with other irrigation systems around the world. VRI can be used by farms that use traditional spraying ways to find specific areas of crops that need different amounts of water. This is made possible by adding VRI technology and GPS devices to the way farmers water their crops every day. The VRI software can tell a farmer which parts of their field need to be watered, and when by looking at the weather and how saturated the soil is. In the end, this will increase food yields and lower water use. Additionally, GPS can find changes in slope and terrain that may have an effect on water runoff, making sure plants get the right amount of water. Farmers and irrigation experts must work together to make the VRI system fit the needs of each farmer in order for this technology to be used properly. As technology improves in Israel, it gets easier for people to live together. It is very possible that VRI will become the standard for most farmers in the future, especially in places like Israel, Africa and India, where it is used with drip farming. Israel has come up with amazing new ways to farm because they need to change and improve their methods. In spite of this, Israeli farmers and experts are not done yet. More technology progress is needed to make sure that food production in deserts can continue in the future. This is where automation and tracking are very important, so that plants can get the water they need even when the farmer isn't there, like when they're selling their crops or at night automated watering systems have been made. Along with variable rate irrigation and drip irrigation, these systems have helped farmers spend less time watering their crops and more time picking and running their businesses. Even though it doesn't rain very often in many places of Israel, these systems work together to look at weather patterns and keep crops from getting too much or too little water. As the world's population grows and the temperature changes, it becomes more important to make sure there is enough food production. However, this job is often hard to do, especially in developing countries with few resources that are also seeing a lot of population growth. Israel has been very open about sharing its agricultural innovations, and many groups are working hard to get these tools to places that need them the most. Israel also uses other farming methods that not only increase food yields, but also have less of an effect on the environment and use fewer resources. Significant changes have been made to the agricultural industry thanks to vertical farming and hydroponics. Today, greenhouses make it possible to grow plants in small areas without using dirt. Plants get the nutrients and water they need through hydroponic systems with little waste. These self-contained systems also make it easier to recycle water, which makes it easier to control waste and get rid of pests than with traditional farming methods. Israel has also been looking into using natural ways to get rid of weeds and bugs on their farms. Weeds and insects can hurt crops even in the desert because they are both looking for food. Scientists in Israel have done tests using modified pollen that target the reproductive cycle of weeds directly. In contrast to pesticides, these pollen are much safer because they don't contain chemicals that are bad for people and animals. Furthermore, these modified pollen are very good at getting rid of herbicide-resistant weed types. Weeds can't get used to pollen because it's a normal part of their reproductive cycle. 
In addition, Israel has used simpler methods to increase crop yields in desert areas. For example, shade cloth covers stop water from evaporating and shield plants from the sun's intense rays, keeping them from drying out. Innovative farming methods that work even in difficult conditions are being used by farmers in Israel. These methods include both new technologies, like variable rate irrigation, and old ones, like shade cloths. Going back to basics is another thing Israel is doing. They are growing foods that are more durable and do well in dry places. Even though this might make sense, a lot of farming companies around the world grow plants that aren't native to their area or don't do well there. It is possible to grow almost anything anywhere as long as you use too much water and chemical fertilizers. This method, on the other hand, is very bad for the land and can't be used in the long term. This kind of farming makes problems worse by causing environmental disasters like algae blooms and resource loss. So, Israeli scientists and farmers are working hard to make plants that can survive in dry conditions and to breed seeds that need less water and food to grow. The Ramon almond, for example, can survive embolisms that stop a tree's water vessels, which lets it grow well in dry places. According to a study done by Israeli scientists, the Ramon almond could become an important crop in the future as climate change makes things drier and hotter. Furthermore, lemon trees have been found to be the best plants to grow in Israel's deserts, especially when mixed with modern irrigation systems. After taking in enough carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, these trees can close their stomata, which are like holes on our skin. This process keeps the body from taking in too much CO2 and also keeps water loss to a minimum. It is not sustainable to grow crops that need a lot of water in a desert, but it is sustainable to grow crops that don't need much water using recycled water and modern irrigation systems, like they do in Israel.